Hi. So I'm just sitting down here working on my wall hanger stuff. These things, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just working on making a few. And so I'm cutting out like an inch and a quarter, a qu one and a quarter inch strips. And also making scrap packs of fabric. So I always have to like measure these and then write down the measurements here. It takes up quite a bit of time too. So I'm just doing like a million things at once. And we sandwich and then stitch right here. With the angle, yeah, you're just gonna use your 45 degree line and cut and use just the glare <laughs> from the lights. But you always wanna make sure that, you know, it matches, that line matches with your edge of your fabric. You're gonna cut up. And if it's off, you're gonna, you know, it's not gonna be correct anywhere else. So you always gotta make sure that that part is correct. Kind of hard to see here, but see, like, um, so my f my 45 degree mark matches here, and that's my measuring mark matches. If it was off like this, or say that you know, say it matches most of the way, but it doesn't quite match right here. See. It doesn't match there, but just say it does match here. It's really crooked here. You can't cut it like that because you'll still mess it up. So it's got to be accurate. And if it is, you know, you just got to cut, still line this up, take it over and cut it, and then you can fix this up by flipping your ruler or your thing, your thing the other way. I flipped my mat over just so you could see better. And... Just wanted to show you because now I'm getting to the point where this is where your accuracy usually matters, like cutting accuracy. So as you can see, it is slightly, there's a little tiny bit of an edge here. It's not really accurate. And then when you put your ruler on, and you match it up right here is not matching and then up here you know matches and even that little bit might mess up things especially if you're you know and then when you try to move it up here right here it's not going to be accurate and up there you know it's still off really what i do is kind of flip it over or flip my ruler over and put the 45 degree line mark on the edge and then kind of cut off that little tiny access, excessive bit. Look at that cut line. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna have to get my ruler again and match it up. And there you can see it matches a little better. And yeah, you're just gonna cut. Got my nice little pile going on here. Okay, time to do the rest. Ever like come across the term stagger your your edges or it's not your edges but stagger? This is kind of what it means. You're just gonna for your when you're doing strip piecing, when you put more pieces, it just means to stay. Some some instructions will say stagger your ends or whatever. That's usually what it means. And the only reason why when you do that is when you cut when you're cutting. You're getting close to the end. You're not wasting fabric, as you can see. You only have like that little bit there and this little bit here. But that's usually why you do it too. Now we got to put these together. How I want them to look. Okay. And I think this is usually. Oh no! They just seem too big. I know I said it before in another video, but you know, you did this right when this part, when your needle actually comes and intersects, matches with this cor little corner here where these two meet. It's usually how you know that's correct or it's. It's right. I'm giving you the up close look 
edit and I'm sorry my machine is dusty <laughs> so it's slightly off but you know what it's actually not bad usually what you do is you want to match your seams but with this because it's such a small project I'm not bothering because it's going to take two seconds to rip anyways but usually you always want to match these seams here so usually with a bigger project I always like get my ruler get a thing get my gauge thing and a pen some kind of marking pen and just mark sorry and just like mark where my seam is and then flip these over and pin them and try to get them to match but this one's like you know it's not bad it's not horrible but it's so small too now that it's pressed open it's actually matching more than when I just folded it. We're good. Throw that to the side. Repeat seven more times. This is literally what it means to press. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> there. And then we have three. And then we had three. Three more to go. And I realize this is a lot bigger than all the other ones, I think. Cause I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, it's bigger than the other one. Perfect timing, cause we are... Actually, there might be enough left for... to put some more together, or... Cause I'm all done, I got my eight. I just have to go and trim them up. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Should go like this, or go like this. And then usually what we do is kind of sew them in pairs. So you're going to sew these together and then you're just going to pair them up. That together and putting them together. So I'll have to trim all these and you're hiding over here. Yeah, you just sew them into pairs. But that's usually, okay wait, you know what, that's when you're doing like with the panels. I'm going to be doing these a little differently. So all we're going to do is just, all I'm doing is just taking these edges off, like just kind of clipping, evening these out, these edges off and so that they're nice and neat. And what we're going to do is put the background together with these because they're so small that you can either applique them on, which I don't really want to applique them on, but yeah, we're going to be putting panels in and that's what I was going to do hmm I think maybe on white I have a lot of white fabric and I was thinking there's a light pink fabric too that would be nice hmm so if I want to go in like this have a light pink on the edge hmm I'm not the pro at this and I know this isn't real a real square a rectangle but I know you just cut out a bunch of squares and then you turn them into diamonds and that's all I know look how cute that is it's so small I'm thinking I should make a quilt with a bunch of these little ones I mean it'll take forever but it'll be so cute I like it. <laughs> I really like it. So I didn't record this part, me putting the rest of this together, but this is what it looks like so far. And I have to fix this because I didn't make it big enough, so I'm just putting my backing on. So here's it. here it is quilted. Just putting it onto my back piece, and I'm just going to cut it like a little bit bigger than my project. There. It's a half inch larger. I wish I had more blue. It would be so much better with blue all around. There. And all I did was just zigzag it shut so I can fix it up, clean up the edges, and, you know, have it lay nice and flat so when I put my border stuff on, it's all right. Okay, let's do that now. So I'm just gonna get a ruler and just kind of trim off the edges. My border to an inch and a half. And so what I did is 
So I folded this part, folded in here and here. I mean, there are other ways you can do it too. I'm just doing it, doing what's quick and easy. And what we're gonna do is sew along here and then fold it over after and fold, stitch on the top. Also gonna fold this end here too, just like that. What you're gonna do is flip it and you're gonna fold, I can't do this holding it. So you're just gonna flip and fold it nice, fold it in half. And then you're gonna cover your stitch line that you made. Okay, but yeah, that's what you're gonna do. You're just gonna fold this part in half. And then sew it like so. <laughs> okay, wait, I'll show you. So it ended up being a little big here, but it's gonna get covered up anyways. But yeah, and all you're gonna do, see how nice and neat that is? I had to make, push it in farther because it ended up being a little too big. So I guess I could have gotten away with an inch. Just cutting out an inch instead of inch and a quarter, half, or even an inch and a quarter. But yeah. That's all you're gonna do. And then you're just gonna repeat it on this side. <coughs> okay, so we're at the end now. We got our ribbons. So I'm just gonna show you what to do. So you're gonna put them, probably, you know, you're gonna mark them at least. I would say, you don't want them right on the corner, but you don't want them too, you don't want, yeah. So I'd say about an inch away. You can get your ruler too and mark where you're gonna put them. Thought I was recording. So, anyways, you're gonna pin it in like that and just like that. You can stitch up here, double stitch here on your ribbons. You can zigzag this whole top part if you want it to so it doesn't fray as fast and it lasts a little bit longer. But yeah, let's take it to the machine and do it up. And when you're stitching the other side here, you can put these loops up if you want to stitch them in. I'm not going to, so I'm just going to let them sit behind there. But yeah, we're almost done. Just got to top stitch the front. There, it's all done. See? And if you don't want your loops showing, you can hide them. I'm going to have to stitch this in somehow. But anyways, yeah, it's done. It's so cute. There's the back. If you want to put a label on here, you can. I should have. I should be putting labels on my stuff. I will in the future. But yeah, it's done. It's all ready to be hung up.